Hey, welcome back guys, Chris here. So up to this point, we have been able to create endpoints to retrieve expenses and income. So at this point, you can see we are able to list out expenses, they are paginated. But oftentimes you're going to need to create endpoints that serve data that can be visualized like over charts on the front end. For example, right here, we are going to be creating an endpoint that will be returning total amounts per category. For example, here when I execute, you can see that we get an object sent back and then we can see we have a key category data and then we have the summation of money that has been spent on, on different categories over a period of one year. So what you're going to do is create an endpoint and then we are going to filter out our query sets to give us these results. And then we are going to be summing up all the money that's, that gets spent in a single category and then return it in a way in a format like this. All right, so let's get started by setting up the view for this. All right, so I'm in the project here. So I want us to create an app that will be responsible for managing all the statistic information on our API. Right here in the terminal, I'm going to use Python manage.py start app. Then I'm going to call this app user stats. All right, so once that's done, I'm going to bring back the server. All right, so once that's done, you're gonna see that we have a new app created here and we have the views. So you're gonna create a view that will return for us what we saw basically, that will return for us this information. So the requirement is we have a key called category data and then inside we have objects which have like keys and then the value will also be key and value with uh, the category, with the amount and then the summation of that amount. Okay, so right here, I'm gonna create a class based view. So this one is gonna be expense summary stats. So we are going to be inheriting from API view. So API view. So let's import API view. So from REST framework dot views import API view. So now, so in here, a user is gonna be sending us a, sending us a get request. So we need to handle that. So def get text and self. And then the request, we basically want to now query the database for our information. So the requirement is we query the database for the expenses that have happened in the last one year. So we need to first get to know what date it was a year ago. So for now, for us to do that, I'm going to first, so dot use import, oh, I didn't copy this, import API view. So I'm going to have to first import something called date time. And then here, we're going to first know which day it is today. So for us to know which date it is, we're going to set up a variable to hold that. It's going to be called today's date. So we can get the day's date from date time. Or today's date. So date time. Then. So this should be import date time, not from date time, sorry. So it's going to be date time dot date dot today. All right, so this gives us the today's date. So now we want to get the date it was 12 months ago. So let's say AI go. So this is gonna be equal to today's date. And then we are gonna subtract how many days? 360. So for us to be able to get that difference, we are gonna use a utility called the time delta. So we are gonna subtract date time, the time delta. And then time delta can take in like the number of days. So let me actually maximize this one a bit. So now we want to pass in how many days. So I'm gonna do days equals 30 times 12. <laughs> so that will give us something close to a year or a year. All right, so once we get that, now we need to query the expenses for the user. So for us to do that, I'm gonna set up a variable called expenses. Expenses, this is gonna be equal to we need to bring in the expense model, which you can import from the expenses app. So from expenses dot models, import expense. All right, so once we import that, now we can query for these expenses. So now we can do expense dot objects dot filter. And we want to filter by the current login user. So we can do user, which so we can do owner, equals request which we have 
Got user. And then we want to filter out these objects by say that they fall in that one year space. So right here, I'm gonna query for date underscore G T E equals and then it's gonna be equal to the date a year ago. So a year ago. Alright, so what this will do is basically query by all the all the expenses that whose date were created, whose date is greater or equal to a year ago, meaning now we need to also provide the other boundary. So also we want that date to not be greater than today, so it should be less than today's date. So here we can put it should be it should be less or equal to today's date too. So date underscore underscore LTE equals today's date. All right, so this will do the job of filtering those. So it will give the user only the expenses that have been recorded in for this year. All right, so once we have that, now we need to basically construct the data that we need to send back. So if we take a look, we basically need a category data key. You see that? But for now, I'm gonna have uh, a variable called final. So this is gonna be a dictionary. It's gonna be empty by default. Then we are gonna be constructing kit and adding information as we go. So now, we basically want to first get access to all the categories that are in here. Because if you think of it, we don't want to be returning a category that doesn't have a record recorded on it. So what you're gonna do is now, we are going to, so now we are going to need to get the categories. So I'm going to write categories. So to get the categories, I'm going to need to, to map through the expenses and for each expense return the category. So basically I'm going to use the map function. So map function basically takes in a function and then runs it over like a list or something that can be iterable. And then it returns for us a list. So what we are going to do, now we're going to create a function that returns for us a single category. So I'm going to call it, okay, so it's going to be self.get category. All right, so for each, for each of the expenses, we are going to need to get the category for, for the expense. So I'm going to create a simple help function here. So def get category, category. This is going to take in self and then the expense. So expense here. So what's it's going to do? It's going to return the category for that expense. So let me add a return. Expense.category. All right. So here, basically what we are doing is we are taking all the, the expenses that we have for the user. And then for each of those, we are returning a category. We are returning a list of categories in these expenses. So it's, it's important to know that map will basically return those values. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to remove, we are going to remove duplicates from those because if you, if you come to think of it, we are going to be having many, many expenses that are recorded like under rent, many records. So we don't want to return rent twice. So I'm going to add this in a set. I'm going to wrap this in a set and that will make sure it removes all the duplicates so that we keep only the ones. So each, each category exists once. So once we have that, now to get the values, I'm going to get the values as a list. So here I'm going to add a list and this should return for us all the categories that should not be duplicates. Good. So once we have this, now we need to look through all the expenses and then for each of the categories, get the amount. So for us to do that, I'm going to write a for loop. So if for expense in expenses, so for each of them, we are going to also need to look through the categories. So for category in categories. So for each of them, now we want to construct, we want to add each category in the, in the final dictionary that we created. So here I'm going to do final and then the key will be now the category. And then we are going to set the value of this. So I'm going to create a function that will be returning the value that will return the total amount for this category. So here I'm going to set equals. So I'm going to create a function called, so let me first bring it in. So self dot, it's going to be called get amount for category. 
and then the category will be of course the current category so i'm going to take in the i'm going to take in expenses and then the category so then we'll go back to this function data and basically what it will be required to do is look at all these expenses actually it should be expenses look at all these expenses and then for each of those categories get the amount and total it up so once we have this now we know that this will basically be updating our final our final dictionary and once we can get the amount using this function then this will be complete so down here now we can return just a response we're going to need to import some utilities here so from rest framework dot response so we are going to from rest framework import status and also response all right so once we have those now we need to return response response will basically be if you look at our final we need a key called category data and then here you can add the key and then the value will be what the value of final will be at that point so here we can pass final so if we take a look at final again so here we can pass final and then we can pass the status code so we can do status equals status dot 200 Alright, so basically what's happening here is right here, we add a key to this, to the final, and then for each of those keys, for each of those keys which are categories now, we get the, the summation of the amount. So we haven't actually recorded this, so I'm going to create it. So I'm going to go up here, and then I'm going to create a new function. It's going to be called get amount for category. So if you look at the order of our arguments, we get the list and then the category. So here we can do something like list. Oh, so list is a keyword. So we can actually get expense list, expense list, and then the category, so category. Okay, so in here, our job is to return the amount. So for us to return the amount, and of course we need to bring self, as the first argument because this is a class so first for us to return the amount i'm going to now first filter this this expense list so that we get only the expenses that belong to this category and then we can work with those expenses when they are already filtered down so i'm going to create expenses key expenses variable so this is going to be expense list with filter so we're going to be filtering by category and then category will be equal to category Okay, so since this is a query set, we can all, we can continue to run our functions on them, so we can filter it again. So once we have this, now this means we have a expenses list. Now we need to look at all the amounts in these expenses. So here, I'm going to also create another variable to hold our amount. So amount will be equal to zero for, for the status. And then I'm going to look through this. So for expense, in expenses for each of them i want to be incrementing the amount here with the amount of this expense so let's do that so amount plus equals so this is going to be expense dot amount so once we are done there now we need to basically return the amount after it has accumulated so here we can return we're going to return it as if you look at our final you see we have a key and then a value so we're going to return that key value so we are going to return amount and then the value will be the amount. All right, so if we basically take a look at our model, you will notice that the amount is a decimal field. So for us to be able to send down a decimal field, we are going to need to first transform it into a string. So here, I'm gonna wrap this into a string so that it can easily be worked with. And yeah, so this should do the job. Because if we, if we go through the steps, basically getting the expenses filtering them and then we are getting the categories that i set and then we are looking through each of them and then for each of them we are getting an amount for the category so i broke this one down and you can easily see how it gets the amount for each category and then it's going to receive in a for loop so it's going to run for all of the categories we can go to urls.py so we need to create that urls.py and then here we need to of course import our view so import so we can do actually from views 
so from dot use import expense summary stats so we also want to import some utilities from the Django URL so from Django URLs import path so you can set up our URLs button by doing URLs patterns so we want a path so this path is going to be going to expense category data so this is now going to be going to the view for expense summary then we put as view since it's a class based view let's give it an optional name so its name is going to be expense summary I'm going to add category there all right so once we have this now we need to register this URL pattern in our main application URL. So in the main app, URL.py, we're also going to bring in this. So I'm going to copy this, duplicate it. This is going to be going to user stats. So this is going to be going to user stats URLs. Okay, so once you have that, I actually forgot to add the user stats app to our settings.py. So just remember to do that just here let's not forget that so now if we come back to the application and then reload you can set it boots up and then down here we have the endpoint listed here so you can see that we do a get request and then basically it should return for us so let's test it out so we need to log in again for some reason so try it out login get the token access token Authenticate here. There is. So now, if we go to the endpoint, it should be the last one. And then try it out. Do execute. Oh yeah, so we get we have an issue. So object is not callable. Let's take a look at the view. So views.py. Where is it? Object where is object? Oh, so this should be. <laughs> Let's take a look at our log. So this is saying module object is not callable. Where is this? All right, guys. So this should be response dot response. Okay, so if we try again here, you can see that there is nothing, meaning at this point we have no records. But if I went ahead and recorded one, so let's say I go to post and then try it out. And then let's say this one went for 40,000 and then save it. You can see that it's sent back. But now if I go back to our endpoint and then execute it again, you can see that we get data now. So we can see that the amount has now been added. To online services and now we are not returning any all the other the other categories that we are not we don't have records for so if i go ahead and add this again so let's say i execute within the same category so if i add and then we check this one again you can see that now it increases okay good so now that's done in the next video i'm going to be adding the same thing for the sources so i'll be excited to see you then I'll see you in the next one.